Hello and welcome everyone. Today on my desk I have a new project sent to me by KP Republic and if you saw the last video of the TacWorks T3 you know that there were some controversies with regard to the marketing aspect of it and uh, the reception of it from budget-minded individuals. If you read the comments you'll surely see uh, some reflections on that. So that kind of reflects in the title of today's video and that is because this board here actually seems to be something that warrants the price point, has a reasonable price point for entry, and has a lot of features that I think are really cool. So this board is a board that was sent to me by Heavy Shell. They are known for the Kira 96, which has a plastic version and a metal shell version, and the Barracks 87, with the same case being there that they've got a metal and a plastic case. Now this keyboard is a 65% uh, knobbed keyboard, or you can get it without a knob. It does come with a south-facing PCB, which shouldn't have to be mentioned, but the T3 did not, and that was one of the biggest arguments with it and one of my biggest disappointments. In addition to that, it comes with a crazy FR4 plate, which we'll talk about here in a moment. And uh, it has a removable top cover, presumably to be able to take that cover off and buy different colors of covers. So why don't we go ahead and crack this open and see what we have in this box. So you do get the nice little uh, shell here, which is pretty common when you get decent keyboards. What I wanna do is I wanna start like usual with taking out what you get as inclusions and then we'll go from there. Now, just to be completely straightforward with you guys, I did have to open this up to make sure everything was functional before today's video. So this is not gonna be exactly how you would receive it because there are some things I'll talk about, but this is mostly the, the same type of experience that you will have as an end user. So you do get some tools, which is nice. So if this is your first keyboard, you, you do get a uh, nice little um, switch puller our switch puller and a keycap puller, which is great. I don't remember what, uh, this was, with, I think this was the daughter board. Um, and then you get all the inclusions that you need to build it. So you, uh, they are using, doing the tadpole mount, which is kind of neat. And uh, then you've got all your case screws. And then looks like you've also got a set of stabilizer pads. And then this one is the knob version. So it does include the knob. Let me go ahead and take this out because it's kind of cool looking and I want to showcase that a little bit more later on. But I'm not sure if you can see this, but here's the knob here. Okay, so we've got a set of stabilizers. I actually didn't see this when I was taking it apart, uh, unboxing it rather, but uh, here's stab pads. I'm not exactly sure what those pads are for. They could be to increase it. <laughs> and then you also get an included set of Holy mods, which we're not gonna do. Now this is the stuff that I think really matters. This is gonna be our foam kit. So in here, let's take this out. We do get, oh, that's okay. I will, I'm gonna give them some hardcore credit here in a moment. But we get a PE sheet, which I think uh, a lot of foam lovers will appreciate. We get our plate foam, and then we've got a force break included. This is the first time I'm ever seeing this. I don't know if you can pick that up too well. It's kind of hard to get on camera here, but maybe you can see it. It's a very thin, clear sheet of plastic, and that's gonna go in between the layers to provide a force break so you don't have to tape it. So that. That is awesome for, again, this could be a potentially win, potential winner for somebody who is doing their first keyboard build. So we'll set these aside because we'll need those here in a little bit. Okay, and then we have our PCB here. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you'll see here that it is 
indeed fixed layout, which is kind of a bummer. So you do not get the option for stepped caps or uh, split backspace or split shift. I mean, it's technically split shift default, but and uh, this does not support ISO either. So this is gonna be straight up ANSI. Another thing to mention is that it's got these per row flex cuts, which I don't typically have an issue with. I don't like when boards have it per key because it's a little bit, it just kind of destroys the sound. It is a hot swap board. It does use a ribbon cable. And as you see here, it does also support uh, Bluetooth. So it's got a Bluetooth module on it. And one of the cool things about this is that it actually has via support. So what I wanted to mention was when I took it apart, uh, there were little pieces of Kapton tape on top of these standoffs. Usually when I build a board and I'm going for a flexi board, I do not uh, use standoffs. So that way it has the ability to move as much as it wants to move. However, in this case, you absolutely want to keep these standoffs installed and we'll cover why here in just a moment. Now here we've got our piece or our plate. It is an FR4 plate and that is important. As you can see, this is a gasket mounted keyboard. We get something very similar to the Gion, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, Cordy keys like socks that go on the end of here, the gaskets. I think I made it call them tadpoles earlier, but it's not quite a tadpole now. Uh, but anyway, you'll get little ends that go on here and they will create your gasket mounting mechanism. But if you look on the back of this plate, it has these little components. Now, I'm not sure if I can get this on camera or not. These are LEDs and diodes. Well, Pengshu, why does this keyboard have LEDs and diodes on the plate? Well, that's because those lights they fire into the switch itself and you can switch the pcb for any other pcb that you want apparently so i'm guessing they might have other options in the future but the conductivity is happening in these standoffs and that in and of itself is pretty cool so when you put this down and you've got it all together the LEDs are going to fire into your, your switches, which, you know, are south facing and, and it should have, uh, you know, it should be lined up. And the switches that this kit will ship with, if you buy the fully built keyboard, has a light pipe in it. And a lot of switches include light pipes now, and it'll shine into that and, and brighten it up. So you get a nice backlight. In addition to a nice backlight, you're also going to get that, that per key RGB. I don't know. It's really cool. I, I had to test it just to make sure everything was good. And, uh, I thought that was pretty neat. And I think it got me really excited to actually make this video. Cause as you know, I haven't put out a video in a while. Uh, Cause it, it just haven't really had anything too incredibly exciting. And th this is actually kind of exciting. All right, so now let's get into what we came here for. The actual keyboard itself. So this is an interesting guy. Get out of case. I'm gonna set this case aside. And let's have a peep at the actual case itself. Now with this, we're also going to get the rest of our foams in here. We've got our PCB foam in the case here. But what's neat is this whole top case just comes off. I'm assuming, because you can buy a yellow one, a white one, a black one, or a silver one. I am assuming that you're going to be able to um, buy different colors. And I just discovered where those little strips go. If you can see here, there is a strip in the bottom, or the sides of the case that uh, is like a, a silicone strip, so it friction fits on top. And then we have a regular case top here, and this is where that force break is going to be applicable, which I don't know if it needs it or not, but I'm going to use it anyway because it's better to have it and not need it, you know, sort of situation. But the only issue that I do take with this is that it does include a 
ribbon cable. So we're using ribbon cables here and I'm not a huge fan of ribbon cables. They're not very user friendly, especially in new user situations, but they're adequate. So this is case foam and then we have a sheet here to help with contact of the components with the case. And we get a nice little 3,500 mAh battery and we've got a daughter board, which is great. Now this kit is going to start right around 240 bucks if you get just the bare bones kit. If you decide that you want the entire keyboard kit with the switches and keycaps, it's a pretty good deal. It's around 300 bucks, comes with switches, TTC switches with that light pipe that I was mentioning. And it also comes with keycaps that, that uh, Dami key keycaps, which are pretty decent, that will complement the board. I think that's a pretty good price, just judging by what we've got here. But we'll we'll cover that after we, you know, we get through this and we get to the final thoughts portion of the video. Now, if you are interested in this, I will have a link in the description. They have provided me with a discount code. It's not a ton, but it's five bucks off. And if you use that discount code. Uh, on this keyboard, you'll get five dollars off that, or you can use the code PunkShoe if you decide you want to do some other shopping as well, and uh, you'll get five dollars off of fifteen dollars or more. So if you just want the keycaps that we take a look at today, or the switches, those will be available to you as well. So let's go ahead and set this aside, and let's talk about what kind of switches we're going to use in this today. Now, KP Republic a couple months ago, <laughs> like I said, I'm a little behind. They also sent me some switches and some keycaps to take a look at. These are Dami key hand lube switches and they're actually kind of nice. They are high moose, so high moose has been pretty popular lately. And um, you know, it has that same consistency you see with a lot of high moose switches. It's got the, you know, they're pre-lubed, they've got the holes in the bottom so that any excess lube can you know come out before they arrive to you. And they feel fantastic. Now these are linears. I'm not a huge linear fan but uh, you know, I'm kind of open to all switches. I love all switches, um, but I really wish that one was a, a tactile and one was a linear because the high mood tactiles uh, are fantastic. They're like the heavy tactiles and, and, and those types of variants. So these are the astronaut switches and they are kind of a like brown red with gray, almost like a cosmonaut sort of thing. And then the deep sea switches are really pretty like blue and purple. You see that here. Now these are, they're both linears. They are uh, 58 and 52 gram respectively. Uh, the astronauts do use just a standard 18 millimeter spring, whereas the deep seas, they use a dual stage spring, again at 52 grams. Now they're both nylon housings. Uh, they're touting a, a palm uh, dust proof stem and they are long pole so uh, they do have a 3.6 millimeter travel so they're almost full travel but they still have a nice crisp uh, pull bottom out that you know everybody loves right now so we're going to be using the deep sea or sorry the astronauts because i feel like they kind of complement the board a little bit better and then we are going to top it with these dami key fading keycaps and these are it's a new set that they just came out with and they are uh, essentially they're they're gray and they fade into other colors one of the reasons why i'm using it is because it does have like gold accents with it and as you can see the kitting is fairly decent in addition to that they also sent over the novelties which i'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be i am definitely getting uh some sort of from soft vibe uh from this so I think that this is probably what they're going for, is that kind of vibe, whether it be Dark Souls or what. So we're gonna build this out with those astronaut switches and this Dami key faded. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now because I've gotta do st uh, stabs that I forgot to do. So we're gonna do those stabilizers really quick and uh, I'm gonna throw this all together and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the assembly process once that's done. And here we have it. Here is the Pair 65. Pretty decent keyboard overall. Uh, I do think the build process was fairly straightforward. I did have a couple of issues, uh, one of them being something on my end and another being something about inclusions. So with this particular keyboard, uh, it does 
include Torx screws. So you will need something again, like a screwdriver kit or a Torx bit to screw those down. It uses a T6. I over tightened this guy here. It stripped fairly easily and it stripped inside the actual case hole here. I was able to get another screw in there that, uh, you know, it, it was able to grab on enough to keep it from moving around. And on this guy right here, I am noticing that it is a little bit looser on the right hand side. So I'm not going to take issue with it. That's a little nitpicky thing because they did include extra silicone replacements. So that way you can you know, do that. As far as the assembly of the board, it was fairly straightforward. Uh, very much like any other modern keyboard. I, it was fairly quick, easy to do. Um, nothing really stand out that was terrible or excellent about it it was just kind of run the mill pretty straightforward I, and you know for somebody building their first board i think this you know could be a pretty decent experience so uh no i don't i don't really take any issue with uh with any of that um the only issue that i had was that the uh the the part where you screw in the screw and stabilizers was a little bit tight and uh, in terms of tolerance, and did, they did not want to go into the smaller hole until you screwed the screw in fairly tight and then it would pull it through the hole. So uh, you're not at any risk of damaging the, the, uh, the ground plane or anything like that or the positive plane. So it's, it's not really that big of a deal, but it was something that threw me off at first. So what I wanna do is go ahead and get into a sound test and we'll talk about this guy, the value propositions and where she kind of sits in the market. See you guys on the other side. All right, and there we have it. That's the pair 65. I think the build came out pretty decently. I think the value propositions are definitely there. I really like that side profile and that, that back. It's very cool. Um, I, I definitely think that this is a board that actually could do something in the market. It could do something for KP Republic because it's a fairly good quality offering versus something like the, the T3 that didn't have the proper south facing sockets and was very high priced. This guy right here, uh, th this is starts at 240 for a bare bones kit, which is right in line with like a QK65 uh, or a zoom board, sort of in that same, uh, that same price point. So, and then considering what you get, I mean, this definitely has a little bit higher quality feel to it than what you would get with like uh, one of those other like more budget pro products that are out there. It is full aluminum. I do like that you could potentially swap out these for different ones. They may come in different colors. You could 3D print them. I mean, you could do all kinds of neat stuff with this or you could just rock the board like this if you're into like the floating keycaps. Um, it does it does have Bluetooth, which is pretty sick. And you get a whole kit for just around 300 bucks, which includes switches and keycaps. My only gripe about this is that uh, I do think you might want to tape up the flex cuts or maybe see if a uh, non-flex cut PCB will be available at some point or reach out to Heavy Shell and see if, see if there's other PCBs that will be available because the flex cut PCB does lean into a much quieter sound, which you've, you've probably seen with some of the QK boards and the Zoom boards that have all those flex cuts. Uh, it is nice and flexy if you're looking for a flexi typing experience. And I do think this would complement palm switches or if not palm switches, at least uh, something in the ink material family or polycarbonate family, because that will lean more into the, uh, the more muted sound signatures, the deeper sound signatures. And I think that would complement this more than these nylon switches, which they really just aren't they, were, they aren't all there for this. It, does it sound fine? It's absolutely fine. It's, it's usable. It's kind of somewhere in between that that clack and thock, right? So I definitely see the value proposition in this. 
Um, I need you guys to let me know because in the TacWorks T3 video, there was a lot of feedback about how uh, you know those that the T3 was sent out to reviewers who don't have a lot of following to try to sway their you know their opinion of it. I thought it had a place, and I thought it was a pretty decent board. I expressed my gripes with the PCB being, well, quite frankly, junk, and I gave that feedback back to KP Republic. This, on the other hand, it's got RGB via support, Bluetooth capabilities, and I think it has potential to either do another run in the future with more features or even uh, just add-ons. Like somebody could take this, if they could get the file from Heavy Shell, they could run with it and make different tops for it, especially if they, uh, you know, release that file. So I, I don't know, I think it's a pretty, pretty good deal. I wanna know what you guys think in the comments. Why don't you let me know? And if you are gonna pick one of these up, you know, use that link in the description uh, and use the code that I'll put on the screen here. And that will get you five bucks off. If you're not interested in this, but maybe you like the keycaps or the switches, those are also available on KP Republic. Use code PUNKSHU to get $5 off 15% or more. Um, I don't really have a whole lot more to say about this. I'm really glad to be back making some videos and I have a whole stack of projects that uh, uh, I'm kind of behind on reviewing. I wanna knock those out because those were prior commitments and then we'll get back into some more interesting content uh, like e-bikes, 3D printing, and uh, lots of different keyboard content. So until next time, y'all have a good one.